Tubers. How are we doing? Did you know that you're a whore? <gasps> and I'm 24, baby. <laughs> yeah! 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 First things first, um, my outfit today is incredible, and I'm so sad that you guys can't see it in full effect, but don't worry. I'll stand up and give you a little fashion show. Wow. Yeah. It's the least I can do. It's just so cute. It needs to be shared. Wow. You see this? You see this skirt? Yeah. It's so flowy. Wow. It looks like I'm going on a tropical vacation tomorrow. Wow. But I'm not. I'm just in my office. Wow. But you guys would never know. No, would you? Wow. I'm honestly not even going anywhere. I'm just doing this new thing where I'm just trying to embrace my body. It's almost summertime and it's getting warmer and I'm not going to spend my days sweaty in sweatshirts. So I encourage all of y'all to put a summer dress on. It's hot girl summer, spring. It's hot girl spring. <laughs> Cute thing, spring. What did you say? <laughs> what rhymes with spring? Ding. Fling? No. Bling. Kring. King. What? It's hot king spring. <laughs> cute king. Cute king spring. But we're the cute kings. It's cute king spring. And as cute kings, we need to, you know, <laughs> wear less things. I need to stop. But anyway, with that being said, love my outfit today. So as you guys know, it was my birthday. <laughs> Woo! Give it up for all the Tauruses out there. If you're a Taurus, raise your glass. Even if you're not a Taurus, raise your glass because we rock, damn it. I feel like we're underappreciated as a Zodiac. I feel like people don't give us enough credit. We're just minding our business, okay? Just trying to have a good time. Just trying to stay grounded. We're the peacemakers. Unless you test us. Do not test me. <laughs> or I'll kick your testes. <laughs> That's not a joke. I'll do it. <laughs> anyway, um... So yeah, it was my birthday and I'm 24 and it's really fucking weird, but I feel really good. Where's the wood? Oh! Where, where can I knock? I feel like 24 is gonna be a great year for me. I feel a lot more confident in my skin. I feel just more sure of who I am. 23 was a fucking nightmare and 22 and 20, just, my early 20s nightmare. But now I'm here and I feel really good about it. I had the best birthday ever and I'm gonna talk about it a little bit. But first, we do have a sponsor today, ladies. So take it away, past Sarah. Thank you so much, Schoolyard Snacks, for sponsoring today's video. You guys are the best. How often do you guys crave something sweet or salty, but don't wanna consume the junk that's in the sweet or salty snack? Well, that's where Schoolyard Snacks steps in, ladies. Schoolyard Snacks is a new brand that is recreating sweet tooth favorites and junk food favorites from childhood childhood that you may remember. But the twist is, they're recreating it with all the sugar and all the carbs. They've been in such popular demand that they sell out so quickly, but luckily, they're back in stock, baby. I know that this is a brand deal video, but I'm not even kidding when I say this to you guys. I got an ad for Schoolyard Snacks on Facebook like last year. I bought a few boxes of it. I was just genuinely curious how they were able to recreate all of the generic sugary cereals. It honestly tastes 
tasted so much like the cereal, but you can, t you can tell that there's no sugar in it, but it still tastes so great. And this time they sent me a bunch of their chips. Oh wait, they, they did send me the cereal. Yes! I don't even know that they sent me the cereal. Oh my God, okay. Sugar-free, one gram net carb, and 16 gram protein. They're gluten, grain, lactose, and soy-free, baby. This is the fruity cereal, and this was my favorite. I remember this being my favorite. They have these keto puffs, and these are flaming hot. Yeah, it's crunchy. It satisfies that craving. And they also kind of look like the real deal, you know? They're just small and petite. Ooh, they also sent me the peanut butter cereal. Oh my God, I'm actually so excited. It's like the recreation of the cereal that looks like the word recess. If you can put two and two together. And they also sent me the regular cheese puffs. These are good too. Spicy is definitely my favorite though. They also have sour cream and onion, but they didn't send me that. I'll have to get my meaty claws on those. And they also have other different types of cereals too. They have cinnamon bun, classic cocoa, which is like chocolate cereal, apple pie flavor cereal, and they have cookies and cream. It's super easy. All you gotta do is order it online and it gets delivered straight to your door. If you guys wanna try it out for yourself, you can get 10% off and free shipping if you click the link in my description below. And they are so confident in their recipe that they offer a 30 day money back guarantee on all orders. Thank you Schoolyard Snacks for sponsoring this video. I genuinely enjoy your stuff. And let's get back into the video. Thanks girl. So basically, it was my birthday. Hee <laughs> I'll post a link in the description if you guys haven't watched the Cheers Brother episode about it because I go into full detail about all the chaos that went down at my birthday party. And it's a lot. And y'all know how bad I am at vlogging. Maybe you don't know. But I just like to live in the moment. <laughs> But I did try to vlog a little bit of my birthday and I just kind of wanted to put together a little mini birthday vlog for you guys. So my birthday party was really good, but I had a lot of anxiety leading up to my birthday this year. And usually I just feel the anxiety on my actual birthday, but this year it was the days leading up to it. After some introspection and digging deep within myself, um, I'm realizing now that a lot of it had to do with my breakup and this being the first year not spending my birthday with, you know, um, this is the first year, right? He's not gonna be in my life. So I was really stressing on that because I didn't know how I was gonna actually feel on that day. I didn't know if he was gonna text me, happy birthday. Even though we're still friends, I also haven't seen him since we broke up last summer. If he did text me happy birthday, I would be emo. But then if he didn't text me happy birthday, I would be even more emo. So I was just kind of like, uh, I just had this idea that I was going to be sad on my birthday about my breakup, but I'm really, really glad that all of my friends harassed me all week. Like, what the fuck are you doing for your party, bitch? We're celebrating you, girl. You're gonna get out of bed. We're gonna fucking have a great day. And my sister even was like, I'm coming into town to make sure that you have a good day. And I was like, no, it's fine. You don't have to do that. And they're like, no, you're having a good day. You're not gonna self-sabotage and be sad. So I was like, okay. So thank God for my friends and my sister for harassing me. It forced me to get this litty ass beach house like an hour away from where I live. It was right on the sand. The ocean was right in the front. I just sent it, booked it, invited everyone literally the day before. <laughs> And I wasn't expecting that many people to like show up for me just because it was so last minute, but mostly everyone that I invited pulled through and like came and it was incredible. So the day of my birthday, my sister comes into town and she gets into LA at 9 a.m. I wake up and I thought that I was gonna wake up with like impending doom in my soul. <laughs> I was gonna say self, in my self, soul, aura, energy field. I thought I was just gonna feel like shit and also I didn't really sleep because I was so anxious. I'm, I was so anxious about how I would feel. That's so annoying. Like I can control how I feel, but I was still anxious about me falling into a dark episode. So I only got like three hours of sleep the night before my birthday, but honestly it was fine. I woke up to pick my sister up at the airport and I had energy. I felt happy. 
I went over and I picked up the convertible that I rented for a day or two days actually because I was like, fuck it. I'm renting a convertible on my birthday to like make me feel better. It was only like 50 bucks. It's this app. It rocks. I felt really good and I was really excited to see my sister. Hey y'all, it's my motherfucking birthday. So I'm at LAX, AKA hell on earth, but that's okay because my sister was so nice and she flew in all the way from Seattle to come celebrate my birthday with me. It's my birthday. Did I mention it was my birthday? Um, so yeah, it's my birthday and I have a feeling that my sister's not even gonna notice that this is a convertible car. Cause it kind of looks like my actual car from the outside, but little does she know, one flip of the switch and this shit, her top comes off. And my top will probably come off too later. Once I pick her up, we're gonna go get brunch. There's this really bomb, where am I? Is this, oh my God. I hate LAX so much. Like so much, like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why are there so many people on earth? The fact that so many billions of women gave birth to everyone here. Happy Mother's Day. That's so nuts to think about. Women literally created everyone. Well, with the help of sperm and shit, but like we pushed all of these people out. Out of our vaginas? That's crazy. Childbirth can't be that bad then, right? If it was truly horrible, I feel like no one would want to go through that. But also it's a, it's life changing. Uh, just thinking about birth on my birthday. Oh my God, my mom pushed me out of her. I was thinking about that the other day because I was just in Oregon and I was sitting with my mom talking to her and I was having one of those like moments where I was looking at my mom and I was like, oh my god, I like came out of you? I was just like in you for nine months just cooking in there? Where, where was I before that? Where did I come from? Like literally, how did I get into her womb? Where was I before? That's the shit I think about on my birthday. Do past lives exist? Or was I in my past life? Was I a dog? Now my wheels in motion and my windows open with the wind blowing in my head. I, I don't know, I feel like I was some sort of like a cat, not like a leopard. The more that I get to know Benito, I'm like, yeah, that's me. I heard one time that if you get super high around your cat, you guys can like read each other's minds. I don't know where I read that somewhere. I think I read that on Reddit somewhere. But like if you get really high and you like stare at your cat, they like pick up on your energy so hard and you pick up on their energy more than usual. You can like tell your cat to go do something in your mind and then they'll go do it or something like that. And I'm honestly terrified to try that with Benito. I feel like I would fucking freak out. Cause I already feel connected to Benito, kind of. I do. But if, oh my God, if I got super high and I realized I could read his mind and he could read mine, oh my God, panic attack. Okay, so of course my sister is at the very last terminal at LAX, but that's okay. She's worth it. And we're approaching now. Rachie, 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 do that. This is sick, dude. Isn't this cool? This is so funny. I was looking for the Chevy. No, what do you the have? The Chevy. The Chevy. It's like. 
But when I saw that it was a Chevy and then I saw a convertible, I'm like, that's fucking sick. Oh, is this a Chevy? I think so, actually. Really? Oh, wait, no, it's not. What is this? I have no idea. <laughs> I haven't ridden in a convertible since high school. I didn't want to pick you up in it mm -hmm. because the sun's not out. And also, I don't want to like mess up your hair or anything. You mess up my hair. I don't care. I mean, <laughs> you can mess up my I'm hair. I'm from Seattle. I'm not from LA. I don't care about that kind of stuff. That's true. <laughs> okay, bye guys. We're going to go to brunch now and I need to look at my maps. So then we're just vibing in the convertible. We got the top down, we're blasting tunes. And there was this song that I remember my sister being obsessed with and I rediscovered it a few weeks ago and I was so excited to play it for her. I don't know if you all remember, but it's called Patron Tequila by The Something Girls. It is one of those songs that whenever I hear it, I just think back to fourth grade and my sister always blasting it in her room, which is also really funny to think about. It's literally a song about getting fucked up on Patron and tequila and my mom was just like ah girls and we're like I'm on Patron tequila I'm drunk on margaritas that was our favorite song and I was so excited to show that to her in the convertible so I pushed play and then her jaw dropped and she looked at me and she was like shut the actual fuck up right now and I'm like no I won't I'm And then we went out to this really cute breakfast place and lo and behold, there was a line out the door and it was gonna be an hour wait. And mama was hungry and it's her birthday. But that's all right, I had another favorite breakfast spot. We had the best breakfast, sitting outside, enjoying our morning. While we were talking, my sister was like, I have something for you. And I was like, stop, stop it right now. Cause I know I'll cry. And my sister pulled out the best present ever. I'll show y'all. I literally cried. I want y'all to know that I have been wanting this book for so long. <sighs> My sister got me the Michelle Obama book. It's called Becoming and I literally started sobbing when she gave it to me. <sighs> I love Michelle Obama so much. This is the description of the book. A work of deep reflection and mesmerizing storytelling, Michelle Obama invites readers into her world, chronicling the experiences that have shaped her from her childhood on the south side of Chicago to her years as an executive, balancing the demands of motherhood and work to her time spent at the world's most famous address. With a nearing honesty and lively wit, she describes her triumphs and her disappointments, both public and private, telling her full story as she has lived it in her own words and on her own terms, bitch. I love Michelle Obama. And my sister just gets me. She gave me the next present, which made me like full on sob at breakfast. And every so many people were like walking by us because we were outside eating and they were like, what the fuck is this bitch crying about? <laughs> it came with a Michelle Obama becoming journal. And it's just like an interactive journal where she asks you questions and it just really like helps you self-reflect in yourself. Am I good enough? Yes, I am. List 10 reasons you are a special and worthy person. Look back at this list whenever you are in doubt. You are always good enough. Bye. Literally sobbed at breakfast about it. I just knew like this is gonna be a great day. <laughs> if this is the only present that I receive, I'll be fine. I just get so emo on my birthday, like I said. Just so fucking emotional. It's really overwhelming. <laughs> and not only that, not only do I get emotional about like presents and shit, I get so emotional reading the birthday texts, reading the birthday messages that y'all send me, that my family sends me. It's 
a lot of love and it takes me like two to three business days to get back to everyone because like on my actual birthday I really try to like stay present and not on my phone usually I'm hungover the next day but then that next day I really like to go through all of the texts and just respond to each one individually so it's like personal and not like a copy paste like thanks so much for the message love you after breakfast, we go home. I get in my little slutty birthday outfit, even though it wasn't slutty. I talked about this on the podcast already, if you guys haven't watched it yet. But basically, the theme for my birthday party was beach sluts. And I don't have like that slutty of clothes. Um, so the best that I could do was like this cute little dress. And I never wear dresses, so it was crazy. So that was like my definition of beach slut. And I went up to my sister in my outfit and I was like, is this slutty enough? And she was like, yeah, for like church. She's like, but it's really cute. I fucking love it. And I was like, okay, I like feel good in it. She's like, you look great. And I was like, cool. We all get in the car, me, Christelle and Rachel, and we're driving to Caitlin's house. We pick up Caitlin. Caitlin came through with the beach slut attire. I can always count on Caitlin to come through. She did just that and beyond. When I saw her come out of her house, I was like, mm, I almost shed a tear. I'm like, yes. So then we're cruising to the beach house and we got there. The lady at the Airbnb met up with us first and showed us around and the house was so fucking cute. I'll kind of just start the vlog right here. Oh, first of all, I took some really cute pictures on the rooftop before the sun set. It was like golden hours, so the sun was hitting me right. And it was cute. I felt like Marilyn Monroe in my little dress because the wind was picking up and it was like, oh pushing my dress down. The pictures are not really cute and I love them. Isn't that such a cute dress? Very church slutty, but like, it was cool, it was cute. But yeah, enjoy the vlog. It's gonna be kind of all over the place. It's not really cohesive whatsoever. Hope you guys enjoy. Woo! Woo! Yeah. 
she wanted the cake so bad. I know, I'm like, what the fuck? God damn it! Bitch, you wanna help me then? It's cake, I guess. Hey, 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 I'm your aunt. 
Oh. I am your aunt and I want to just like take care of you, but I had no idea what that was going to cause. I'm so happy with the outcome. Oh my I'm, like, God. I'm so thrilled. That was a lot. I can't. I'm too drunk. I don't know what to say. I want to play soccer platonically <laughs> with you. What the fuck was that? Oh my God. I want to play soccer out. with you platonically as if soccer is a sexual <laughs> act. It's what are you saying? I don't want Dixie D'Amelio to kill me in my sleep, bro. I'm not trying to be fucking weird. I just respect him. Oh God. my God. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I know you guys are probably thinking like, what the fuck was that reaction? That was over the top. It's just a TikTok kid. And I know, okay, I was borderline blacked out. <laughs> I never thought that someone would shove Noah Beck in my face. That was just such an awkward situation. So it was just like, what the fuck do I say to this kid on FaceTime? And then I ran away. I just want him to play soccer again. I don't have any more footage from this night. But basically, everyone pretty much blacked out besides my sister and my assistant or manager, Jenna, she came. And then my sister walked me up to bed. I just remember waking up out of the blackout, like screaming. And my sister was like hugging me and holding me. And I was crying about my ex because he did text me, but it was just like, happy birthday balloons and like that was the perfect text to send because at least he sent me a text on my birthday and also it wasn't like overwhelming or like a lot or even a paragraph it was sweet simple but even that fucked me up you know just even a happy birthday with balloons because i was like oh my god the fact that he's only saying happy birthday is so weird so I was like crying to my sister for a solid hour. I just remember coming in and out and like crying and like yelling about shit. But she was comforting me and like holding me through the night. I knew that some emotions were gonna come on my birthday. I was able to distract myself all fucking day. So my brain was occupied thinking about other shit. And then right when I go to bed and I'm laying there, that's when it all hits. So that's just what happened. And I felt comfortable with my sister, obviously, to let that out. And I felt better the next morning. Actually, I didn't in terms of a hangover. That was one of the worst hangovers I've ever had. But like emotionally, I felt better because I was like screaming. I was like letting some deep rooted shit out of my body. It was really healing. Um, and then I asked everyone the next morning, I was like, did y'all hear me scream crying last night? And they're like, we, no, we were, <laughs> no. So that day, the next day, hangover day, was a Saturday and I bought me, Christelle and Rachel three tickets to this drive-in comedy show. It was in Hollywood and it was gonna be really cool. And then this footage you're about to see is us going to the comedy show. It's not that much, but I vlogged something. Hey vlog, we're at a comedy show What's in a convertible. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> we want you hey. hey, girl. Love her. Please um, do. please do. The roof is glittery, and we're, we're in line. Here's some important things to remember. Don't forget to cough into your elbow. Don't forget to use that same elbow to tap other elbows that might have been coughed into. When you get home, be sure to jerk off with your elbow. Let's get elbows to work. Agreed. I'm available for children's parties. Guys, it's time. Finally have my fettuccine Alfredo on my breadstick. Mm. Mm. Oh wow. <laughs> Where's the airport? <laughs> this was supposed to be a cute ass little picnic. We were gonna have a picnic in the park on Rachel's last day here, but it's also Mother's Day and Olive Garden was popping. <laughs>
all day. So we couldn't go into Olive Garden. It was a two hour wait. So we ordered to go and that was also an, a one hour wait. <clears throat> it's fine. Shout out to Antonio who was very sweet to me. <laughs> At Olive Garden? Yeah. What is this? I think it's scallops. Okay. Yeah. Scallops. There I go. I'm gonna try it. Christelle ordered a kid's pizza. It tastes like asshole. <laughs> Just imagine that, guys. An like asshole. Being asked for. Anyone out there eat ass? <laughs> Everyone <laughs> simultaneously <laughs> watching. Yeah! <laughs> but yeah, Rachie's leaving. Mm -hmm. Rachie pee pee. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rachie pee pee. Fucking no, don't call me that. I hate it. It like sends chills down my spine. I wonder why. Um, I can tell you why. I can tell you why. <laughs> why? There was this girl that went to middle school with Rachel. Oh, I know this story. <laughs> she was like such a valley girl. Like she had like a really like, oh my God, hey. Every single time she would see Rachel, she would be like, <gasps> Rachie baby. And then on MySpace, she would go on Rachel's MySpace page every day and write out Rachie <clears throat> pee pee. I love you so much, you're my favorite person of all time. Me and Rachel would laugh so hard because it was so cringy, but that was also her friend, so she would have to like give her the energy back. Yeah, <laughs> she's still around. Doesn't she, she still call you that? She still calls you that. <laughs> it's 15 years later. We're adults now. <laughs> Nothing's that changed. Is so good. No, it's not. It's terrible. Dude, it's it's like terrible. the only name that would it would make sense. Like, I hate that for me. Sarah I, Pee Pee. Yeah, yeah, Rachie Pee Pee. Rachie Pee Pee. But I'm wondering why the Pee Pee? Why not like BB? Because like Rachie B, like Basca. Rachie BB. Bee -bee. Rachie yeah. Pee Pee. Her dad says a little thing that <laughs> reigns true right now. <clears throat> you can't make sense out of something that doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't make sense. Wise words from Rick Basker. He yeah. needs to write a book. I was literally gonna say, tell that Look. man to write a book. <clears throat> He's been writing his book for <laughs> however many years. I've been offering to help him for years now. He's been also wanting to make a YouTube channel for five years. He doesn't even oh. go on Facebook. My mom goes on his Facebook and like likes and comments for him. Uh -huh. I like posted something on Facebook and dad commented it. And I was like, dad's on Facebook? Why is dad on Facebook? And I asked him about it and he was like, that wasn't me. <laughs> I was like, okay. Anyone want a mozzarella stick? I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna yeah. Really? Ugh. Oh damn. She's only been to Olive Garden one time. And the first time you've ever had a, an Olive Garden breadstick, it wasn't garlic. Dude, it was literally just a stick. It's so annoying. And I was like, why the fuck do people hype up Olive Garden breadsticks so much? And I was never so went again. I was like, I'm never coming back. And I didn't. My dad got a Caesar salad. Mistake on his end. Why would you get the Caesar when there's the house salad? You know? <laughs> why would you get a salad at Olive Garden? <laughs> oh my God. What are you talking about? Oh, they're really good. Really? Oh, girl. I just feel like if you go to Olive Garden, like get pasta. <laughs> So they bring out complimentary salad as an appetizer for everyone, no matter what. So you have to like eat the salad when you're sitting there and it's so good. The house dressing is insane. Anyway, I'm sad. Rachie Pee Pee's going home. Rachie's going home. <laughs> it's like an automatic response now. My body's like, <laughs> is that person around? <laughs> Rachel, did you enjoy your time? I did. I did enjoy my time. I met a lot of Sarah's friends mm -hmm. safely. Mm -hmm. We were all vaxxed. All vaxxed and waxed. Rachel was the best. She helped clean up the beach house after our little get together. It's in the bag. Um, I was so hungover. <laughs> And Rachel cleaned the whole place. She fucking rocks. Yeah. And she... Yeah, if you and Melissa weren't there, we would have died. A disaster. I had to mop the floors. Oh my god. <laughs> I remember it. walking in the kitchen. I had my socks on. And Ugh. I stepped in a puddle of whatever fucking fluid was Ugh. on the floor. And then I was so drunk I didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> I just kept right. vibing. And Going. then I woke up and I literally had to peel my socks off. <laughs> Like sticky. Yeah. Found someone's underwear on the roof. I don't what? Know what that was about. Wait, what the fuck? Who fucked on the roof? Who fucked know. on the roof? 
Come with anyone fucked on that. <laughs> Why wasn't that one of us? It was my birthday. I met someone who looked like the adult version of the kid from Freaky Friday. Oh yes. Oh, yeah. <gasps> that was a treat. <laughs> he really did. It's a I treat. didn't see it until you said that the next morning and I was like, oh. Look up Harry from Freaky Friday. I met him as an adult. He really does. We were laughing so hard. We were like, so what if that cute. actually was him? <laughs> Everyone was raving about how hot this guy was. And then you just you in the corner like, is that the kid from Freaky Friday? <laughs> uh, Caitlin fell asleep in the sand. <laughs> she did. For yeah. like an hour. Literally just asleep on the fucking sand. I fell asleep in a twin bed with Joe and I was the big spoon. Mm. And I woke up to him slamming his head on the bunk bed. <laughs> it was a bunk bed. So there were two beds. No, but we wanted, I was a big spoon all night, baby. Aw, that's so <laughs> precious. When I invited Joe, he was like, yeah, I can only stay for a couple hours and I'm not going to get drunk because I have work at night in the morning. And then he just stayed all night long. He got there and he was like, fuck, I didn't mean to get drunk. And then I was like, Joe, you've been here for 30 minutes. <laughs> literally, he was one of the first people there too. Yeah, and he was one of the drunkest people there too. Yeah. Yeah, oh. I had to fill a tequila bottle with water at one point. Mm. Cause these bitches. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's funny. It's I was time. your age one time, and I was like, yeah, and I was pouring water shots Two for everybody, and they were all taking shots. And yeah. They thought it was real. They're like, did they take it? And they didn't notice. I'm just trying to hydrate everybody. Let's come on, you guys. Let's go. Let me get my secret bottle of water tequila. <laughs> <laughs> That's because so I know I have to clean tomorrow. <laughs> oh my god, dude. You're so I enjoyed it. Lie. <laughs> Rachel woke me up the next day and I was like, no, like I couldn't. And she's like, do you want me to come back in like 10 minutes? I was like, please. Do you I remember been like, bitch, wake up. We're cleaning. Do you remember me? coming in Rachel was like um I'm kind of worried about Christelle she's not waking up and I was like I got it I just I'm so hungover I like barge in your room I'm like hey fucker we gotta get going get the fuck up you're like I hate that you just said that I woke up but I didn't open my eyes for another five minutes yeah, yeah. I like stood up and was brushing my teeth but I still hadn't opened my eyes <laughs> just in the bathroom <laughs> and I scrubbed my tongue and I literally almost yeah <laughs> and Caitlin was was next to me and I was like, don't yak in front of Caitlyn. I washed my face the next morning yep. with dish soap. With dish soap? That's all that was available. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. Gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. The comedy show was cool. There was this one bitch who, she was just, uh, <laughs> She was just she not was funny. She so was problematic. She was dropping the F-bomb. Like F-slur, yeah. yeah. She was saying fuck. She was saying fuck and it was just not okay. Yeah, you know, it was so awkward because people, we had like little flappers. Mm. And people were using them after she like dropped the F-slur like three times. It and was, I was like, ew, you guys are stinky. Yeah, and she was like racist. Yeah, she was like making racist jokes about Mexicans. High key racist. Mm -hmm. And it was just so awkward because she was one of the last acts. And so she was like one of the headliners, I guess. And no one was laughing. Yeah, and she bombed it so bad. She kept saying out loud that she was bombing and it just made it way more uncomfortable for everyone. Yeah, and you can tell she was getting more and more anxious. Sarah Hyland is a comic now. Oh my God, there's this girl. Wait, was that actually her? No. There uh -huh. was this girl named, they introduced Sarah Hyland. And we were like, the the daughter from Modern Family is a comedian now. And she comes up on stage. We can't really see her face, but it looks like her kind of. And she just has the thickest country accent. And she's so aggressive. And yelling. And she's yelling. And we're like, Sarah Hyland, what is she doing? Is she okay? Is she okay? Is she okay? And then and she's we like talking about her wife. I'm like, wait, what about the guy from The Bachelor? What's what? his name? Who? Um, the bartender on on Bachelor in Paradise. What oh, is they're this? together? Yeah. What wow. What is that. his name? Dylan, Phil, Connor. I think it's just with an M. Michael. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mike? Mike. No. It's Mike. No. no. Oh. Hello. <laughs> what socks am I wearing right now? Oh. Good checks. No socks today. Wells. 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 Wells.
fun seeing Sarah introduced to her mid twenties. Welcome. We're glad to have you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh. Once you're 26, you'll sprain your knee break dancing like me. She sprained her knee trying to do the tricky dance from White Chicks. To be fair, I do know the dance. <laughs> it's just been a while since I've stretched. <laughs> you were down to do a backflip. I can do a backflip. You can. I, I'm I'm I can. No, I know. You're saying I shouldn't, and uh, I yeah. agree. <laughs> it's definitely not the smartest decision. Really? I had a like, gin and tonic. I was feeling nuts. Yes. Feeling wild. Oh, I love gin. <laughs> gin. I love gin. That's the only gin I like. Um, tonic, little lime. Yes. Some champagne in it. Yeah. Make a whole drink. Rachel really like actually wanted to commit to a backflip, a standing backflip she could. I 100% would, except I had a friend in the background going, Rachel, your knee's fucked up. <laughs> Rachel, your knee. And your ankle. And your back. Good times, great salad. That's what the Olive Garden oh, tagline is. Oh, when you're here, your family. When you're here, your family. <laughs> Good times, great salad. <laughs> <laughs> Me earlier, why the fuck would you get a salad at Olive Garden? I was. Mm. <laughs> no, I get it now. Okay. I mean, I don't. I have a salad. Like, I, I don't know the Olive have Garden mine. culture. Have mine. There's a salad in there? Yeah. There should be, yeah. Um, They better have I put actually, some salad. I think there's another layer. There's a piece of cardboard. Yep. <laughs> That's the salad right. underneath. They gave us four of these <laughs> bags of breadsticks, and there's probably at least six. <laughs> so I, I, only, I only ordered one. So I, did you just do the. Yeah. <laughs> it says Terminal 6. Is, what is going on? Oh, I can't. Oh, that's fine. I can walk. Okay. Oh. I don't have a sprain knee or anything. Just kidding. Oh. <laughs> I'm kidding. Wee, Fresh air. It really is.